Okay, so for step one, <clears throat> for this project, we would need to set up an account or register at StravoSpot.org. So I've already clicked on that. I'm just going to say I'm not a robot and submit. Okay, so once you've logged in, you see some basic stuff under your account. If you click on my data, right now there's nothing here. But that's what we want to do next is we want to add a project. So let's just say project name. I'm going to call this... Ramon uh, Aerosmith Warford Ranch Volcano and uh, I can add some other information in here which are useful but I'll just say for now this is a demonstration for the class and uh, this would be teaching about volcanoes and Strabo, let's say. Okay, submit. So the project is created successfully, and we can see it here. So for now, we you can make it public or not, but that is a, a switch you can take, and then we'll use this link here about adding data in our next task. The next task, we're going to go in here under Add Data, and what it does, it busts out basically a new little map mapping interface that's quite similar to what's on the tablet. So let's click on the data sets. There's nothing in there yet. And we could go to the main map, which is doesn't know where anything is yet. So we could you know zoom in if we want. But uh, actually it has me zoomed into to Tempe but first we want to add some maps that are relevant for Warford Ranch so we want to go to other base maps and we want to add them and it's hard to see this little plus over here so we want to select map type Strabble spot my maps and let's call this first one here Let's call this the WRV Ortho Zoom. And this is just my name. You could call it what, whatever you want. Uh, but then the key thing that you're going to want to do is to grab, you want to put in the Strabble map ID. And I've copy and pasted it here, but I've provided this for you as well. So this 616-CAA-4AC0831, that ID then will pull what I've already loaded. And don't for now, I don't think we need to set the map as the overlay. Just say check. So I've added the other two that we need. And so just to explain them, the ortho zoom is the zoom to the study area. It's a 0.1 meter per pixel ortho image. The ortho 0.2 is a bit broader. It's the entire area that I have at 0.2 meters per pixel. So it's a little bit smaller file size given the greater extent. And then the hill shade is 0.1 meters. And so these, now we've set them up, let's go back to our main map. And we're still here in Tempe, but if we go over to Orford Ranch, which is, I think, down around in here. And you can, what you want to get used to is you can turn these different uh, on ba base layers on and off. So let's turn the Ortho 2 on. It may be a little bit slow at first because it has to pull this in over the network, and, and it's a big file. So now I've got it there, and you'll see it's it's because it's a big file. It has to pull the different pyramids in, or different levels, there's different zoom levels in. So it may take a, a little while at first, but then I think once it's been loaded at each zoom level, the first time it's easier. So here's the volcano. So now if we go back, we can have a quick tour. So here's Mapbox Topo. So this is the, their kind of canned 
data they have from Mapbox, and it gives us a sense of where where the volcano is, and that's good. Now, later in a future part of the tutorial, I'll explain we're going to need to to save these for offline mapping on the tablets, but that'll be something to do next week. But everyone's going to need to do that. Uh, so then the other thing is Mapbox Satellite. And so this is a pretty good data. These are satellite imagery, probably kind of what we're used to in Google Earth uh, or Bing Maps or something. You can see the overall volcano. I want to point out these a few of these concentric rings are former lake levels. So this sometimes is dammed, this area, I guess, or there's a lake here. But yeah, so you see that dam. So don't be alarmed by those lines. But then we zoom in to the volcano and you'll see the Mapbox satellite data are pretty good, but they're probably 30 or 40 centimeters per pixel at best. So if we now click to our ortho and you can see at first it's not so great, but it pulls in its different zoom levels and it's, you know, better than the Mapbox satellite. So already we start to see some interesting features on the volcano. Now then if you click on the ortho zoom, so this one's even, uh, it's 10 centimeters per pixel, so it's a little higher res than the ortho. See that difference? Okay, so then the final layer that we've brought in is our hill shape. So this is artificially illuminated topography. It kind of shows the volcano morphology in a, a way that may help us for mapping. It's sometimes easier to put some line work on the hill shade because it's sort of just a grayscale, a little bit less distracting than all the complex colors of the ortho photo. But that's up to you, and you want to basically toggle between each of the base layers as you work. All right, now let's go ahead and do our mapping. So I'm going to turn on the ortho and zoom in to an area of interest. And up here on the on the left, we see these different symbols which refer to point, line, polygon, and edit. And so if we click on the point, we get the tool and then click here, let's say in this little mine shaft. You could keep the spot names as they are or um, edit them. So I'm just going to say mine test pit and I can add a note. What are they doing here? Don't click on set to my location. That would be worth only used if we we're in the field and it would, if you click at it, it uses the location from the GPS positioning on the uh, uh, tablet. So now what, what's a little bit unnerving is it doesn't s indicate that it's going to save it, but it will. So if we click on go back to the main maps, it's been saved. And uh, I think in a little while we re we'll see that the label may be updated as well. So the next thing we can map is these linear features. So if I change to the ortho zoom, the higher resolution data, I see some of these interesting features. So I'm going to map them as a line. But you could, for the fatter ones, also consider mapping them as a polygon. But let's just do a line. So I click the tool. Each click adds a vertex. And a double click will end it. And then once you end it, we get the dialog again. So I'm just going to call this you know, feature one. I'm not providing a lot of detail right now. A key thing is the click trace feature, and that lets us then indicate some more attributes about it. So it's a known, you know, high quality trace type. Let's call it a geologic structure. What is it? Some other structural zone. Uh, other, I'm just kind of keeping it generic in the interest of uh, not giving away too much for the mapping project. But you, once you decide what it is, you could choose other uh, more meaningful attribution here. So then we go back, main map, and there 
is that feature. Let's do another one. And so I'll zoom in. Let's try this one as a polygon. We don't exactly know how wide it is, but here it is. So I'll come in and double click to finish it. Call this feature two. Now one thing I, that's important here is if you go to more, there are many controls here, many additional things we can add, but let's click on the IGMET. And if we go back now and we click on IGMET, we can say a little bit about this in terms of the rock or other aspects of it, but I can say igneous, volcanic, basalt. Maybe it's a kind of uh, a little bit vuggy basalt and perhaps it's uh, uh, maybe that's it. Uh, maybe I can say other has some interesting textures. And, and so on. So I just then I just keep going. Main map. And it should record that. And now I'm progressively mapping the area. So you can just interact with it. And then the nice thing will be that all these features that are mapped on the cloud in advance of the field work can be downloaded to the tablet once we're ready to head to the field. So, so those are simple ones we can go. Let's do one more set of features. If I switch over to the Ortho 2, I thought I saw an interesting site down here where you can see the bottom of the, f the flow maybe. So let's map that as uh, right in this area as a depositional context. So we'll go line. I don't know what why that sticks out like that, but let's just go to there, double click. And then I can say base of flow. Not really going to use Zigmet here, but I can say uh, trace feature known contact, contact type, depositional, it's a sh volcanic contact that is sharp. So that's nice to get those good attribution as we go. Now we're in the, uh, on the tablet itself and I'm launched Strabo spot the app. And so I'm going to log in with the account, the same account that I was using on in the cloud in the browser as demonstrated in the earlier part of this video. So now we've logged in and so I want to go ahead and go over to manage and I'm going to select an existing project. So this is the key thing is I'm pulling down the project that we were working on on that was on the cloud in the earlier part of this video. So I click that now I'm going to click that default data set, turn it on. Now I've pulled it down to the tablet and I'm ready to work. So I'll click on maps. So it's all there. It's really exciting to see this integration between the uh, mapping online and the mapping on the tablet. So I, you see the data. It's all there as we had done. You can edit and add more points if you like. So a key thing you see is we have only the online base layers displayed. So we want to save these for offline use. So you take the view that you uh, have chosen with a particular base layer uh, highlighted, and then you see the different zoom levels. So we were just on about the zoom 15, but if I click on the 19 zoom level, I see there's 3,000 tiles. So you just want to be in a really good spot with high quality Wi-Fi, high quality network, and go ahead and get as many as you can. So your best strategy might be to start at the lower zoom levels, so the ones where you would pull down fewer tiles and progressively go to the higher zoom levels until it you you know your internet dies or 
un until you get too impatient. But if you could do this stably, this is my internet at home is very good. But even uh, if you have to wait a little bit longer, it'll it'll pull them down. If you have to restart it and do it again, it remembers which ones it downloaded, so you can try it a few times. But I really want to encourage you to give it a try. But and you really have to do this with each of the data sets before we go to the field. All right, so that worked. That's a good sign. You want to see this uh, map download complete. So now you've re you've downloaded it and you can go back and you just would go to each layer successively and do the same thing. And and you have to be patient, but you probably want to also get the Mapbox satellite, do that one, but maybe at a slightly lower zoom level, like maybe 17, that's what this one is, and download that one. And then the same thing, be good to pull in that Mapbox topo and download it the same way maybe zoom level 17 you can go higher zoom levels it just takes longer to download them and now we the mapbox topo mapbox satellite is more for context okay notice here i'm turning off the wi-fi and so now when i go and i test it shows i have some of these offline base layers although i'm not uh, totally sure that they're they're saved correctly but i know i saved that hill shade and so when i when I zoom in on it, I'm getting it locally because I saved those files rather than having to try to pull them down from the network, which we may or may not have good access to. So you have to do this for each of the data sets that you want to have as base maps. Okay, okay now I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi back on. And what I want you to see is here under Manage Project, there's Upload Project. So you're going to want to click this. And you see it, you have to keep track of where's the most important data. In other words, send, you know, what you had online or on the tablet. And so once you've worked on the tablet, you're going to upload this and overwrite the old version of the project. And that's where you'll be able to do your homework and otherwise analyze the data.